Griffin guarded by Duncan Robinson. John, in the old days, he would look to take a player like Robinson into the paint. Absolutely. He's just camped out on that three-point line. Very pedestrian, doesn't want to be the threat. Jeremy. This is a video that is long overdue because if you have had the pleasure of monitoring Blake Griffin's career, then you'd understand how sad it is to see what has become of him. And while a part of me believes there is a glaring reason why Blake Griffin has been so bad this year, another part of me can't help but feel horrible to see what has become of what was once an incredibly transcendent talent that seems to have been wasted. So what's going on guys, your boy Mike here. And before we jump into this analysis, make sure you smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm, subscribe, turn on our notifications and check us out on Instagram and Twitter so we could get your takes featured in the content like we will in this video. Also, this video is sponsored by Raycon, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Now that we got all that out of the way, cue the intro. Mic check one, two, one, two. There are times in the NBA where the number one overall pick is absolutely obvious in an upcoming NBA draft. Very similar to how things were back in 2019 when Zion Williamson declared for the NBA draft after his loan season at Duke University. That NBA draft lottery essentially became known as the Zion Williamson sweepstakes and ultimately the New Orleans Pelicans won that lottery. The same could be said about Blake Griffin in 2009. A lot of people don't realize this because that 2009 NBA draft ended up becoming one of the most iconic NBA drafts in NBA history, and also one of the most interesting ones because Blake Griffin, James Harden, Steph Curry, DeMar DeRozan, Drew Holiday would all get drafted in that NBA draft, and ultimately Tyreek Evans would win Rookie of the Year that year. And when the Los Angeles Clippers won the number one overall pick in the 2009 NBA draft, there was no question about who they were going to take with the number one overall pick. Blake Griffin was an absolute surefire superstar at the number one overall selection boasting the athleticism and intangibles that your average NBA team would seek in a modern NBA big man. Now, bear in mind, this was the tail end of the dominance of the NBA big man right before the absolute three-point pace and space revolution that would be introduced by the Golden State Warriors a mere five years later. But in Blake Griffin, you essentially saw a modern day Carl Malone, a player that would thrive in the pick and roll, had jump out of the gym athleticism, and although wasn't necessarily known for his abilities defensively, possessed tremendous defensive potential. Unfortunately for Blake Griffin, he would have a confirmed stress fracture injury in his left knee, which would delay his NBA debut for a couple of weeks. And then after a while, they realized that the knee was a little bit more of a serious injury than initially thought. So Blake Griffin had to sit out his entire rookie year. But man, when he came back, I don't think I've ever seen a player transform the landscape of the NBA the way Blake Griffin did. His athleticism was significantly more off the charts than we all thought, bringing down posterizer dunk after posterizer dunk, electrifying Los Angeles Clippers fans, and even seeing some NBA fans jump on the LA Clippers bandwagon. I personally have a few friends that had no interest in basketball until they finally saw Blake Griffin play basketball. And at that point, they were so captivated that they became Clipper fans even till this day. Blake Griffin was such an exciting talent that there was even a rumor that when the NBA became interim owners of the back then New Orleans Hornets, when Chris Paul demanded a trade, they vetoed the proposed Los Angeles Lakers trade for Chris Paul because not only did they get a better return for Chris Paul, from the Los Angeles Clippers, getting players like Eric Gordon, Al Farouk Aminu, a unprotected 2012 first round pick. But on top of that, they just felt like it would be better for the NBA and would generate significantly more interest in the NBA 
if they got Blake Griffin, a point guard of the likes of Chris Paul, to establish the Lob City Clippers. And from that point and on, the rest was history. Yeah, the Lob City Clippers were absolutely remarkable to watch. They were met with tremendous amounts of heartbreak. And I'd like to go completely in depth on this part of Blake Griffin's career, but I know for a fact that if I did go in detail each and every year why the Clippers were not able to advance past the first or the second round in the NBA playoffs, this video would take forever. Let's say throughout the entirety of that era of the Los Angeles Angeles Clippers throughout the six years that the Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan, Chris Paul, and JJ Redick quartet were orchestrated together. Each and every year, either they would choke at some point in the NBA playoffs or they would lose as a result of a very poorly timed injury. And after their time together, Chris Paul made it known that he wanted out, citing his issues with Doc Rivers as the reason for them. And DeAndre Jordan appeared to be on his way out as well, although there were some things getting in the way of allowing DeAndre Jordan to leave the Los Angeles Clippers like a, I don't know, home invasion break-in. Speaking of break-ins, let's take a break to acknowledge this video sponsor, Raycon. As someone that lives in Los Angeles, California, one of the biggest problems of this pandemic for me personally is the fact that I can no longer go to a gym, which makes working out fairly challenging because I live in a full household and there's noise around me all the time, which makes it very difficult to focus. That's why I absolutely love Raycon's Everyday E25 earbuds because they're completely noise isolating. And especially as a guy that likes to work out to hip hop music, the bass is significant significantly higher than your average earbud. It's definitely had a huge influence in the way I level my audio levels whenever I'm editing content for this channel. Raycon is so confident in their product that they are willing to give you a 45 day free return policy. And when you use my promo code, you get an extra 15% off of a very inexpensive earbud. Go to buyraycon.com forward slash flight mic to get 15% off of your order. And thank you Raycon for the sponsor. So eventually, what would happen is Chris Paul would get traded to the Rockets. However, the Clippers really wanted to retain Blake Griffin's services, pitching him on this whole concept of becoming Mr. Clipper, being the best Clipper to have ever donned the uniform. And that's not really that much of a stretch. Blake Griffin has by far been the best Clipper for the Los Angeles Clippers up until that point. But eventually the Los Angeles Clippers realized that they were in NBA purgatory with Blake Griffin on the books. They were not good enough to continue contend for any championships, but they were not bad enough to bottom out for any potential number one overall picks. And the Clippers would essentially trade Blake Griffin to the Detroit Pistons for Avery Bradley, Tobias Harris, Boban Marjanovic, a 2018 first round draft pick, and a 2019 second round draft pick. A move that was considered to be a little snaky, considering the fact that Blake Griffin never took a meeting with the Detroit Pistons in the offseason, and they pitched him on this concept of becoming Mr. Clipper and then shipped him off to nowhere just to get his contract off the books. Like, at least the OKC Thunder nowadays will trade a star player to a team that they want to go to, or more recently, you saw the Houston Rockets reward James Harden's loyalty by trading him where he wanted to go to, which was the Brooklyn Nets. That wasn't necessarily what the Clippers did here, which essentially did their best player of their franchise's history completely dirty in my opinion, and that's how Blake Griffin found himself in Detroit. However, things weren't so bad in Detroit. Blake Griffin was coming to a team with a ton of youth and Andre Drummond, who was already proven to be a capable center in the NBA, although his playing style was slightly outdated. But that didn't stop Blake Griffin from posting his best season since his third year in the NBA once he had a full year with the Detroit Pistons, averaging 24.5 points per game off of 36% shooting from three, 46% shooting from the field, and seven and a half total rebounds. Blake Griffin would even dish five assists during that year. But ever since then, he's began to slowly decline. And this would all begin in 2019. In April of 2019, Blake Griffin would miss three games with left knee soreness. 
And eventually this left knee would kind of become more and more of a factor in his career. He would miss the first two games of the playoffs that year and following the playoffs would undergo left knee surgery. He would miss the first 10 games of the 2019 to 2020 NBA season while recovering from that left knee surgery. And after playing 18 games in 2019 to 2020, Blake Griffin would have a second surgery on his left knee and would miss the remainder of the season. Blake Griffin would then return for the 2020 to 2021 NBA season and began to look like a shell of his former self. And it's not necessarily basic stats. If you watched Blake Griffin play now, he is no longer the super hyper athletic power forward that captivated us when he was a member of the Los Angeles Clippers. As a matter of fact, it looks like his athleticism has been completely sapped from him. Now, granted, he's only played 20 games thus far and hasn't had a full healthy season since the 2018 to 2019 NBA season, but the Detroit Pistons already have found his replacement in Jeremy Grant and are willing to attach a young star alongside of him to potentially trade him away to a different team. Blake Griffin currently averages 12 points, 5 rebounds, and 4 assists off of 36% shooting from the field and a player efficiency rating of 10. He's sporting his absolute worst box plus minus and value over replacement player of his entire career this year. So what is going on with Blake Griffin? Why did this happen? Well, on one hand, I think it's a combination of things. One, you have a player that is working his way back from an injury. Blake Griffin was a remarkable talent that was still really good despite not being nearly as athletic these past couple of years when he was on the Detroit Pistons. But I think a combination of multiple left knee surgeries combined with the fact that he's on a team that isn't really going to make it to the playoffs and has zero chance of winning a championship, that could also take a hit at his motivation. So on one hand, he already has to overcome the mental obstacle of returning to the NBA hardwood in perfect shape. But on the other hand, he has to overcome the mental obstacle that he's working his butt off to get healthy just so he could return to the court for a team that has a better chance at winning Cade Cunningham with the number one overall pick this summer than actually competing for a NBA championship. So there are two scenarios that I see for Blake Griffin this coming year. One is the Detroit Pistons trade him by attaching another young player to his contract or a first round draft pick and trade him to some other team. And I'm sure the OKC Thunder would salivate at the concept of a Detroit Pistons first round pick and would happily eat the final two years of Blake Griffin's salary. They're already doing that with Al Horford. The other scenario is, and I think this is a little bit more likely, Blake Griffin just straight up gets bought out by the Detroit Pistons. I think this is significantly more likely because the Detroit Pistons are years away from contention. So it's not really worth trading a first round pick just to get a contract off of the books because I don't think that contract on your books is really the difference between you making it to the NBA playoffs and you not making it to the NBA playoffs. I'd like to see his contract get bought out and potentially go and sign with a contending team or even a team that just has a good and healthy training staff to assist him with his knee injury. A team like the Golden State Warriors come to mind because they already are known as a world-class organization with very good trainers that could help Blake Griffin rehabilitate, but I feel like that should be the very top of his priority list. Let me know in the comment section down below, what do you think? Why do you think Blake Griffin has fallen off so much this year? Do you think it's his injury or the fact that he's on a bad team? Or do you think there are other factors at play? Aside from that, I'm your boy Mike, and I'm dropping our mic until our next upload.